for my MMA career, I never planned it to go that way. But yeah, I didn't lose for nine years. And like, that's, that's pretty rare. I didn't plan for that to happen. That was just what happened. You okay, know? but you also didn't lose like the second part of your college career. My 87, I lost, I won my last 87 matches. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that didn't come along with the hatred of losing? You just- I don't like losing, I still don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, I would have much seem rather... to, Okay, but you're, you don't, uh, you don't seem, to, you, you seem to kind of shrug it off a little bit. Okay, so like with, specifically with these two instances that you bring up, with the Masvidal, I, it feels definitely, so, okay. Mm. All right, let's, let's, go, let's go deep, let's go deep. All so right, on the Masvidal right. one, it feels different, because, um, so had, wait, 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 let's, for people who don't know, okay. uh, Masvidal loss was your first loss. First loss in, in MMA. MMA, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And I mean, and it was a dramatic loss. Very dramatic. And there was this kind of build up as you were potentially one of the greats yeah. of all yeah. time yeah. coming into this fight. Mm -hmm. And okay. so this pressure, all of that. So the, no, I mean, I, I was thoroughly enjoying it. I, don't, I, I didn't feel the pressure. <laughs> okay. So the Masvidal fight is, he, he got one fucking move on me. It's not like he beat me. And if we do that again, I think I win at, at that point in my life. For sure, I think I win way, way, way more times than I lose. He he knew that too. That's why he didn't want, he didn't want to sound the sound the bottle agreement. That's why I had to taunt him and why he got so mad because I had to continue to taunt him in order to get him to sign. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that one hurt because uh, and so people don't know my MMA career. I'll just go through it fast. I did mm -hmm. three fights in like uh, smaller leagues. I got signed by Bellator. I was undefeated for three and a half years. I was nine and zero. Oh. Um, when I got done with that in twenty twelve, no twenty thirteen. Um, I, at that point in my head, I was just gonna transition to the UFC because that's where you go. I was ranked like sixth in the world. I hadn't really had a competitive match at the end of the Bellator thing. Mm -hmm. And Dana White, for a reason still unknown to me, we still haven't had this conversation. I wish I could ask him, I should ask him sometime, um, chose to refuse me any entry into UFC. He just said, I went to his office and he literally said, we're not interested. We're not gonna make you an offer. Did you did you mention something to uh, about him about the UFC? That was a his... year before that. That was okay. a year before. That, okay. that, and that that might play a role in it, I think. Uh -huh. So uh, yes, what happened the year before that was uh, I called him a liar. Which, but listen, I'm right on this one because he said you can't test for drugs because I'm I'm all natural, which you can yes. tell by my physique. Um, <laughs> and I was always put off by the fact that so many people cheated, and I I was very vocal about that. And so he had made some statement like, oh, well, there's no way you could test. I said, bullshit. You, you, very specifically, I said, USADA does it for all other sports worldwide. You can do it. And then it was funny because they hired USADA a couple of years later. Yeah. So I think he took some offense to that. But that was like a year and almost a year and a half, I think, somewhere yeah. it was later. Um, it's not like he holds a grudge or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, so I, I literally go to Vegas. Um, it's a long story. You can read about it other places. I, I so I got released from a belt. It's not like this is negotiating. I got released from my belt or contract. I said I'm out of here. I'm going. I'm going to go to the UFC. I go to Vegas, and then I was told, "Hey, there's no offer for you." Tough shit, you know. So then I ended up signing with one championship. I spent what three and a half years there. I won the belt in my second fight and retained the title the entire time. And then I just again I think, dominating people. Yeah, I, I didn't have a competitive fight. And so um, I retired 18 and 0. Never, never get, and for someone who loves a challenge, never getting to really challenge myself was incredibly frustrating. And I left the door open. But I said, if I ever get the chance to prove I'm in this world, I'd love to come back. So somehow a year later, I get traded. Trades have never happened. And this is the one and only trade ever. I got, I've been retired for a year. I got traded. I get to come back. I fight Robbie Lawler the first fight. I win. And then essentially they're saying, okay, if you fight, uh, you know, if you beat George, you're gonna get the title shot against Marty. And um, it's like, this is this is what I've been working for the entire, I've been trying to prove I was the best fighter in the world for the last 10 years and I have, I've not been afforded this opportunity. Um, so when I lost to George, that was, that was hard because I, it was it's something that I had waited for for a really, really long time. It was something that I, you know, I thought I could compete for and I never got the opportunity to do. So that one was hard. Um, at the same time, from like just a competitive logistic, it's like he got me with one move. It wasn't like he beat my ass for 15 minutes and I got beat a bunch of different ways. So that was like, fuck, like if I get it again, I could have done it, but I'm not, I'm not, they're not gonna let me have it again. It's not like wrestling where you could go the next year or the next week or whatever, you know, you lose a big tens, you go to nationals two weeks later. 
Does so, that loss change you in any way? Your psychology? I don't. I don't think so. It's the no. first loss. I mean, had I had I had a longer MMA career post that, yeah, there definitely would have been a lot of time spent getting better at the en- the entry point to the takedown, right? Which I'd already spent time there. Um, I don't. I and I, I hate making excuses, but yeah, the the hip, the hinging of my hip, what I couldn't do was preventing me from doing some things, and it's why if you look at the fight, I'm like bent over as I go for the double leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I, what happened for people who don't know? You went in for a double, double leg, leg, and, and he, he went. Flying knee. He did a flying knee, yeah. and, and and the way caught he, you well. Specifically, the way he did that knee was kind of different than the way anyone had thrown flying knees before. Most people go more just from a stand straight vertical, whereas he took a few like running steps and went more. You know, the trajectory of mm-hmm. the angle was different. Um, so I think that's kind of probably why it caught. You know the. I think a lot of things in combat, well, probably everything, but I focus specifically on combat, happen subconsciously. Like our brain is reading what's coming at us. And and a lot of times it's stuff we've seen before so we can judge how to move correctly. Yeah, you misread because it's something you haven't seen had, before. Had not seen him come at that specific angle, yeah. So that loss was really hard. With the Burroughs one, I, I told you, I knew I was gonna lose. So it was like, yeah. f- whatever, you know, I'm, a, I'm taking this because I want to put the sport of wrestling out there in a big way. I want to help them raise a lot of money. We sold at Madison Square Garden, Who Theater, and we raised a whole bunch of money. So my goals were accomplished. Mm-hmm. Jake Paul fight, I took it because they paid me a whole bunch of money and I thought it was going to be fun. Did I have any illusion I was a great boxer? No illusions whatsoever. Would I have preferred to win? Absolutely. But, you know, like I told everyone, whether I win or lose on Saturday night, I'm going to be back coaching wrestling on Monday because that's what I enjoy doing. And I was back coaching wrestling on Monday. And once in a while, these middle school kids give me a little bit of shit about it and that's it but that's about wh- it. where were you in terms of your shape and how you felt uh, in the Masvidal fight would you say you're on the right. I mean it's a difficult question to ask of of a world class athlete but like were you past peak oh yeah yeah and so I don't know like, I don't know why guys like to lie about that I mean the peak for me was really evidently in my la- late 20s um, and maybe they are all fueled by extra supplements I, I don't know but I, for me that, that was evident but you get this so you get this crosshair where um you're if you're smart like a, you know like i mentioned john burroughs was you're still gaining wisdom you're gaining strategy you're gaining a lot of things right and so while your physicality may go down your overall skill level still may be rising especially in mma because people usually start later because they're gaining wisdom, strategy, all of the maybe more tools in their toolbox, right? They're getting all these things. So their actual competitive peak, despite their athletic peak going down, might still be a few years past that, right? Because these things are crossing. Um, no, so I felt I, felt I, was, I was great. Obviously, the hip was an issue. Um, it's, it's funny because so the, I knew I had a lot of pain here. And I knew it was because of this. And it was like, okay, whenever I'm done, I'll just get it taken care of, whatever. Uh, but I, every time I trained, I would have pain kind of like all up my back. And the day after the surgery, I woke up and there was no pain on the right side of my, the surgery was on the left side. There's no pain on the right side of my back. I'm like, that's fucking weird. Like every, every morning I wake up, there's a lot of pain there, you know? Um, I'm like, okay, well, I'm on pain pills. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll come back tomorrow. And it's, it's literally never, never been back since my oh, head. Wow. So it was weird. Cause it was like this, I thought this was affecting this but it was affecting all the way across my whole back. So, you know, if I get to get a new hip, honestly, if I, if I, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna change the competitive outcome whatsoever. If I had known how good the hip replacement was gonna be, I would have done it the second I retired from one championship in November of 2017, I would have had my hip surgery scheduled for December one. Just from a lifestyle standpoint, I could only sleep in one position. I, there was a lot of things I couldn't do. I was in a lot of pain. Um, so I would have done that a lot earlier. But no, from a athletic point, it, I was ready. This shit goes wrong sometimes.